Welcome to the first official episode of Empowered Explant, the podcast helping women ditch their breast implants with confidence. I'm Dana Mersica, a board certified health and wellness coach and fellow explant warrior. In this episode, I'm going to start to pull back the curtains on my own explant journey. And although 12 months later, I feel great, it was not a straight, easy path to get here. I'm going to tell you about my symptoms, what led me to the decision to explant, how I knew I had breast implant illness, and how I prepared for surgery. It's crazy that I spent 10 years of my life with breast implants inside my body, feeling so detached from myself without even realizing it. Honestly, it's not until you get your implants out and recover from surgery that you realize what you've been missing out on the whole time. I was really sick with my implants in. And looking back now, I can see how unwell I really was because I could barely function. I have a list of symptoms in front of me in the symptoms tracker I filled in before surgery. If you need a symptoms checklist for yourself, you can download it at tracker dot empowered explant dot com. I'll put a link in the show notes. But it makes me quite emotional looking at this list. Uh, I'm going to read them out to you so that you can hear what symptoms were affecting me and, and some of these might overlap with some of yours. I had fatigue and low energy brain fog, memory loss, and cognition problems. Seriously, I could barely even string together a sentence. Muscle pain and weakness, joint pain, mainly in my um, hips, my knees, my shoulders. Um, I also had a lot of pain in my back and neck. Numbness and tingling in my limbs, which was mainly down my arms hair loss, a lot of hair loss, premature aging of my skin. I really just looked so tired and worn out all the time. Skin itching and rashes, weight problems. My weight problems was with weight loss. I was extremely skinny. Insomnia and poor sleep, dry eyes and decline in vision adrenal fatigue, low libido, slow recovery after exercise, working out was just so difficult, vertigo, headaches, migraines, reflux, gut issues, nausea, uh, ears ringing, heart palpitations, swollen and tender lymph nodes, dehydration, frequent urination, slow healing and easy bruising, cold hands and feet, chest discomfort and shortness of breath. I didn't even realize that I couldn't breathe properly until I got my breast implants out. Pain and burning around the implant and underarms. I had so much pain in and around my breasts. Depression, anxiety, and panic attacks. And so many of these symptoms, like I said, I I really had no idea that they were associated with my breast implants. Now I look back and I go over all of these symptoms and I think about how I felt, I can see that they were killing me. They were slowly draining the life out of me. I looked like the walking dead. I was anemic. My skin was pasty and colorless. I was incredibly thin and weak and I was brain dead. Literally the description of a zombie. Every day, I would have to lay down a few times just from feeling fatigued and nauseous. I had this constant headache and brain fog that made it impossible to think clearly. It was really messing with my day-to-day, my work, everything. Let's rewind a little bit. So a couple of years earlier, I knew something was off, but it wasn't as severe I'd get fatigued easy, a lot of headaches, I was sick a lot, but there was a lot going on in my life. So I would always just think it was stress related. Uh, Yeah, you know, it's got to be normal. It's just what I'm going through. It'll get better when life isn't 
beating me up as much. Then I started experiencing pain, sharp pains in my breasts and numbness down my arms, pain in my shoulder, uh, chronic back and neck pain. And on top of all this, the, the fatigue and brain fog kind of started setting in pretty bad, even though at that time I didn't really realize what was causing it. Honestly, I got really scared because, well, it sucked. I didn't feel like myself anymore. I was a health coach. My nutrition was great for the most part. All my blood work came back perfect every time. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. I absolutely got to the point where I felt crazy. But because of the pain that I was feeling in my boobs and my back pain, I figured it was time to think about removing or replacing my implants. I'd noticed how heavy they were. They were starting to head further south, you know, gravity was taking over and I was getting stretch marks on my boobs. And so the aesthetic side of things was really kind of concerning me at this point. I couldn't possibly go braless anymore and it was just uncomfortable. I couldn't even sleep braless. Um, so I had to wear, I had to wear sports bras to bed every night to kind of hold everything in. So I was looking into what my options were. And then you know how as soon as you start Googling about something, Instagram just so happens to start showing you things about that same topic. Well, this time I'm glad it did because I came across a woman sharing her story about breast implant illness. And holy shit, it was like looking in a mirror. And in that moment, I realized it was my breast implants making me sick. To this day, I don't know who it was sharing her story at the time, but she saved my life and I wish I could thank her. So now I just thank everyone who shares and that's the reason I share my experience because if our stories have given us anything, it's the power to save another woman's life. Women ask me, how can you say you absolutely knew it was breast implant illness? My answer is because it had to be. And as crazy as it sounded, it was the only thing that made sense. The more I started diving into the science behind BII and how breast implants cause these issues within the body, I finally felt this feeling of relief because I had an answer. And now I knew what the problem was. It was time to find the solution. And so that's when I started researching surgeons and procedures and all the options. But I knew from that moment forward that I would not put another set of implants in my body. There was just no way, not after seeing the thousands and thousands of women that are being affected by this. Even though at the time I was absolutely terrified of what going back to my natural boobs was going to look like. And I was completely overwhelmed by the options. Lift or no lift, fat transfer or not, lift and fat transfer. I remember thinking, what if I can't afford any of this? And it wasn't just me I was thinking about at the time. It was also my boyfriend. What's he going to find more attractive? More sag? or more scars. Is he still going to find me attractive at all? He wasn't totally sold on the idea of breast implant illness, but he was supportive of my decision to explant and was happy for me to do so if I felt it was best for my body. And I was really grateful for that. But beyond that, he didn't really want to discuss it, learn about it, look at any photos of other women's results or surgery photos or anything, or be a part of any surgeon consults. And I think that really drove a lot of distance between us because 
this was a really, really big thing I was researching and planning. And I didn't feel like I could truly open up to him about everything. I don't think I even realized at the time how much that feeling of being in it alone weighed on me. Even though I had my boyfriend there and yes, you know, ultimately I had his blessing and getting the surgery um, and I had my mom there as well and I could talk to her about it and she was supportive of my decision, but because she had her own implants and she was very resistant to the idea of breast implant illness because she didn't want to think about it for herself. So there was this barrier up. She didn't really want to hear me. So I think that's why I spent so much time in Facebook communities connecting with women who understood what I was feeling. And that's ultimately why I created my own community. And we started out with this really incredible group of women who were all explanting together. We were all explanting at the same time with the same surgeon. And it was just a few of us in a Facebook group. Uh, and it was really, really special. And we would have group calls and just really encourage each other and, and support each other and share what we knew with each other. And it got us through and we're all still connected to this day. We'll also dive into the relationship side of things more in future episodes, because I know this is something that a lot of women struggle with before and after explanting, and for both partners' sake, it needs to be discussed. But for now, let's talk about the new man that came into my life, my surgeon. I went to Dr. Dev at Aqua Plastic Surgery in Miami, and it's kind of funny because I originally called for a consult with Dr. Rankin, but switched it because he was booked out so far in advance. And although I know Dr. Rankin is a wonderful surgeon, I'm so, so glad because as soon as I researched Dr. Dev, I just knew he was the one. When you choose a surgeon that you feel really confident about, it relieves a lot of anxiety. I'm going to do a whole episode on choosing a surgeon because let's face it, that is a really important part of a successful explant surgery. I remember sitting in Germany, paying my deposit and scheduling my surgery date. I was so sweaty on that phone call, but as soon as it was booked, it was like a huge weight was lifted off of me. And the ultimate decision was finally made. Next was all the planning and preparing my body for surgery. So a lot of surgeons will tell you that you just need to cut out a few things two to three weeks before surgery. But let me tell you, starting to get your body ready for surgery three to four months before is a game changer and can really help your recovery and detox. I quit drinking alcohol. I went on an anti-inflammatory diet and focused on gut healing. I did lots of yoga and functional movement and strengthening and started switching to non-toxic products. And I'm telling you, if I didn't have breast implant illness, I would have been at peak health. And the other thing that no one tells you is to start working on your emotional well-being early. Working on healing past wounds and insecurities and practicing self-forgiveness and mentally preparing was for sure one of the most important things I did pre-surgery. I didn't realize how much shame and regret I was carrying about my implants and how I was attached to them as a part of my identity. I did lots of meditation, journaling, visualizations, and cognitive behavioral therapy exercises. And so by the time surgery rolled around, I felt pretty calm and ready. I was as prepared as I could be for the change that was coming. And boy, oh boy, it was a lot of change. I acknowledged and addressed my anxieties and my fears at the deepest level. I had forgiven my younger self, which is such an important, huge part of this journey that often gets forgotten. And because I had started that 
inner work, I now had the capacity to process the next truckload of emotions that hit after surgery. And there were a lot of them. We moved from Germany to LA two weeks before my surgery, which was absolutely exhausting, especially with how sick I was at the time. Carrying suitcases and everything was just not easy for me. Then me, my mom, and Sassy took off to Miami for my surgery. I was so tired. Honestly, I actually was looking forward to the long nap in the operating room. I was like, doctor, knock me out and was super excited about the mandatory rest afterwards. Uh, The night before my surgery, I was laying in bed feeling pretty anxious, which is normal. Uh, And so I wrote notes to my mom, my dad, and my brother in case anything happened to me while I was in surgery. And that was a scary thought, but it was, it's a fear that you need to face and, and think through, okay, what can I do in this moment to make this very real fear and real risk feel a little bit better? And so that seemed like a good idea. And I also wrote a goodbye letter to my implants, which is super healing. And at the time, I just did it. It felt right and natural to me. It felt like closure to me, um, like saying goodbye to an old relationship. And I really recommend that everyone does that before their surgery. Going to sleep that night, I knew my life was about to change. I just didn't realize how drastically. In the next episode, I'll talk about my explant surgery experience, what the recovery was like, and the challenging shift that I never could have planned for. If you're planning to explant or preparing for surgery and feeling a little overwhelmed, I just want to validate you because explanting is a big deal. It can be really stressful in the lead up to surgery. One thing that helped me is making a list of everything I needed to do or buy. The problem is you don't know what you don't know until you know. So I took my list, I made it beautiful and organized and downloadable for you. You can get my explant planning checklist at checklist.empoweredexplant.com and it's also linked in the show notes. If this episode resonated with you, please subscribe, rate the show and leave a review. Your support helps this podcast be seen by more women who need it. I'm sending all my breasties a big hug and I will see you soon.